Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic. And I'm Rick Reckless, and this is our NAF World Cup Alicante 2023 rosters preview video. Glorious. Okay, so here's the, the team builds that they've got. It's a, it's a NAF standard 115 kind of tournament. Um, the stacking permitted, but it costs you one primary and one secondary to put two primary skills on one player. That's all you're allowed. Uh, they've got five tiers, um, as you can see here. So we've got tier one, Chaos Dwarves, Dark Elves, Dwarves, Humans, Lizards, Orcs, Undead, Woodies. And then each tier has three packages to choose from. One is, you know, the, the most amount of skills. Which A is the most amount of skills. Six primary skills for the good teams. <laughs> uh, B, you can give up two primary skills for one secondary. And then for C, you can give up three primary skills for access to one star player. So there you go. What, what do you think about that, Rick? Yeah, that's, uh, that's right, Jim. Uh, I think in Tier 1 and 2, we'll primarily see people taking the A packages with the most primary skills. Um, the, the teams to note for me in Tier 1, uh, you don't always see Orcs in Tier 1, but I do think since Biggins have come along, they probably are a Tier 1 team. They're very strong now, and I think that's a, a correct change that we're seeing Orcs Tier 1. Um, we still haven't seen Wood Elves dropped from Tier 1 yet. They were so solidly Tier 1 and one of the very strongest of Tier 1 for so many years. But they're just so rarely taken these days and they have been hit hard in NAF format. So I, I would have maybe expected to see them drop by now. It hasn't happened and they're still there in Tier 1. I mean, they're, they're still a monster team, aren't they? You, you know, even if you have to play them more conservatively, like, it's, it, it's it, they've got the whole Skaven problem of, like, you know, if you drop them, will they be mistiered and stuff, isn't it? Which... That that is true. I think we'll have to try it at some point. So the, the two things to think about on them is, is one, the one turn is now harder with the sprint gone. Um, yeah. And secondly, they're, they're higher costed. They're, they're much harder to build, even to 115 than they were previously. So that's two of the reasons why people have been put off. Yeah, yeah, and obviously Dark Elves outclassing them now, but um, right. But then we've got Tier 2. We've got Amazons, Elven Union, High Elves, Necromantic, Norse, Skaven, Slan, Underworld. Um, they just get plus one skill to every tier, don't they? A's seven primaries, B's five primary plus a secondary, C's four primaries plus access to one star. Yeah, and um, as I said, I think with Tier 2, we're still going to see most people taking Package A. It'd be interesting to see where Amazons and Norse fall in terms of ability, because they both had a tweak recently. So uh, none of us are quite sure how strong they'll be. They're certainly not weak in Tier 2. Um, and then there's, there's Necro as well with the Wraiths, and I think that they're a pretty nice team at Tier 2. We see Slan moving up. So Slan, for the longest time, were a Tier 4 race. And they've even crept into Tier 3 occasionally, but I think this is probably the first time I've seen them at Tier 2, and I think that's a good move. With yeah. multiple rerolls, they seem to be really strong in this format. It's 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 certainly enough for, for Core to jump off of Slan and jump onto Skaven this tiering, hasn't it? He's, he yeah. really likes Skaven in Tier 2. And and he's been going uh, Slam for a long time now and taught me into it as well for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's right. Then, as you say, he points out that Skaven are there and their one turn now is magnificent. The the Roger can't wild animal anymore. It's guaranteed to, to go. You can give it Juggernaut. You can give a Gusser on a sidestep. You've got a, a thrower if you want with two plus passing. Um, so yeah, very, very strong Skaven in tier two. And the other strong team is, uh, is uh, that stands out to me is Underworld. Um, mm -hmm. They have been sometimes tier one ranked. Obviously, when the Blood Bowl 2020 first came out, people still had them tier four, but very quickly changed <laughs> as we realized just how strong they are with a yes. gutter runner and with snotlings that can swarm. That's been slightly nerfed now, but it's still very strong. So Underworld tier two is a little lower than you sometimes see them, and they might stand out. Mm -hmm. And then drop into tier three. Now tier three is is actually like a pretty appreciable difference, I think. Here, uh, this is like the tier twos are only slightly behind the tier ones, right? But the tier three is where you start getting something juicy. But, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's Black Orcs, Chaos Chosen, Imperial Nobility, Corn, Nurgle, Tomb Kings. Only one of those, I think, looks like a decent team. Um, <laughs> but the, yeah, they get seven primary skills plus a secondary, so they're getting like you know essentially fifty more, t well, sixty more TV these days on the tier ones. Uh, then B tier five primary, two secondary, and C is five primaries plus a star. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the 
big difference here then is we might finally see some stacking um, because you get that secondary mm. in the A package. So that's one option. Or, of course, people might start taking the secondary skills a lot more. Um, so, like you say, there's only one standout team. I think that's Tomb Kings. I, I would add in that I think Korn are the second place team in this tier. If you put a lot of block on Korn, then they, they suddenly become pretty effective. You've got a lot of strength. They're not the least responsive team. Uh, the rest of the teams probably a lot less so <laughs> in this uh, in this tier. Yeah, but I, I honestly, I can't believe Tomb Kings are tier three. Um, they're, they're so much stronger now in Blood Bowl 2020. When other teams have taken a hit, they've been given thick skull across the positions <laughs> that didn't have it before. And on top of that, the throw rars now pass on a three plus, which yeah. you don't ideally want to be making passes with your throw rars. But in a, in a squeeze, it's super, super nice to, to have them more reliable to do it. Mm -hmm. And then, so tier four is again. This is, this is only a slight upgrade, isn't it? To that, um, they get one more skill at each position. So um, it's Chaos Renegades, Old World Alliance, and Vampires. Eight primaries plus a secondary, six plus two, or six plus a star. Any of these? Any of these tickle your fancy? Maybe. I don't think. I don't think any of them are absolutely terrible vampires are so hard to play these days but you, you can get something out of them but th that would need a whole video to go into <laughs> on uh, on discussing vampires i don't think we'll see them taken very often chaos renegades could have been fitted to tier three but they're certainly not too strong at tier four uh you made a good point about old world alliance so i had a look at those and uh, we'll, we might see more on this later but you can get Griffin there with quite a nice Old World Alliance team. Prior to that, I wasn't really fancying it. But now that you've mentioned that and uh, I've had a look, actually, yeah, this could be the tier where we start to see star players come in. Mm -hmm. And then the final one is the is the the worst teams, if you like. But they're actually not. You know, they're actually the funny thing is their win rate isn't that bad compared to like Nurgle and Chaos, is it? So this is a real big tier for halflings, goblins, ogres, and snotlings. The stunties that are down there. And they, they get an extra tier of skills here. This is this is wild, isn't it? Um, so eight primaries plus two secondaries or six primaries plus three secondaries. But people probably aren't going to take those, right? They're going to go for the six primaries plus one star or four primaries plus two stars. I would think so. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, Stunties in Blood Bowl 2020, not as far adrift as they used to be at all. And the really, really standout one is the new one. Snotlings can really hold their own in many formats. I'm actually quite surprised to see them at tier five. I guess it just looks neat and tidy having the stunties together. But uh, yeah, I've had a look at the teams and uh, four primaries and two stars on snotlings can be scary good. I think we'll see a lot of snotlings. Yeah. So before we look at the uh, rosters that we've come up with, um, would you like to take us through the uh, loud inducements thing and the uh, extra charge for the star players, seeing as you're the tabletop expert, Rick? <laughs> I don't know about that, Jim, but certainly I shall. So the allowed inducements, anybody that's used to playing NAF tournaments will consider standard fare. What is worth noting is more and more recently, tournament organizers seem to not be allowing bribes and sneaky git on the same team because it's just too strong of a stack. And we see that again here. Uh, the thing that's uh, really interesting to me is the new star player system. The first time I saw it was at the Euro Bowl. You now effectively pay two or three times for a star player and it's finally allowed balance with having star players and it's brought them back in because for a year or two we've had star players pretty much banned from any sensible tournament and uh, now we're starting to see them come back in again but first of all you take a package with less skills available so you're paying once you're like you used to paying the gold amount so that's twice and then as we see with this table here for the stars that are really potent you're paying a third time by reducing the skills even further. Yeah, that's going to be huge, isn't it? Like three, like it's going to make tier one, tier one teams will be loath to take Griff or Morg, won't they? Like that's that's they're leaving them without any skills whatsoever. So, yeah, that's yeah. that's really interesting. Uh, the cool thing is it kind of changes the balance a little bit because you get teams that were very efficient considered previously, like dwarves. They really need their skills, right? They're efficient gold-wise, but they're not efficient skills-wise. They need their guard, so they can't afford to take stars. And then teams like Snotlings or even something a bit higher tier like Underworld that can maybe get away with taking less of the skills can then bring in the star players to really bolster them. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. And the last thing to consider specifically for the World Cup, um, rather than just like any 
any other tournament using these rules is the squad system. Um, the teams of six people will all play and they will get the same points as the squad gets. Two points for a win, one for a draw, none for a loss. So, you know, you might have to only win one game and draw five to win the round. Um, so that, that could influence the builds a bit here. Eh? It could. Uh, people might be more inclined to go for a team they feel really comfortably can get the draw um, as a lockdown. And the two things I'd like to note is uh, if there is a problem with a star player being too strong or a race being mistiered, you can get away with it a lot more in this squad format than in individual competitions because the races are limited to one a squad and the star players are limited to one a squad. Yeah, it's a great, great point. Cheers, Rick. Right, let's get to the teams then. Okay, so first up is, is a team that I'm actually really excited about. It's the, the new Amazons, and it was my idea for what to do with basically a pretty nerfed roster, right? Um, the, the old roster was pretty easy. You had four guys that could get guard. Um, so, well, their, their four skills aren't taken. But now, seeing as you can't take guard, you can take a star, and you can take Morgan Thorg, and uh, that takes up most of your skill slots. And I don't really want to give these girls skills, but what I do want to give skills is a strength four blocker. And giving that block, making it a strength four blocker, essentially you're getting Carla von Kill for a, for 110 TV plus a skill choice, which is which is crazy, right? Essentially, and plus Morg as well. And your supporting cast is is six three three four eight. Dodge line women, they're like they're totally fine supporting cast. Unlike a lot of these teams where you have to support them with snotlings and goblins or whatever, now you just get Morg on a decent team with a superstar ball carrier and two rerolls. You know, it's you've got a blitzer thrown in there. I really like this, Rick. Yeah, incredible, honestly. Um, the blitzers, yeah, no block anymore, which is which is a big nerf and no strength access. But uh, if you keep them unskilled, then they do have jump up and hit and run, and then movement seven now. So actually, unskilled blitzers, not a million miles away from being bludgeon and a bit slower, maybe even better, you could argue. But yeah, the blockers are really interesting, and it's it's going to be a long time to see exactly what Amazon rosters people produce that uh, come out as the best. But you just can't go wrong with Morgan Thorg, can you? He's mighty blow plus two. That's going to get removals. We've even seen tournament organizers take him down to mighty blow plus one, along with Deep Root. Uh, obviously, sometimes they've been banned. But here he is with his full strength. And yeah, this is, this is a squad to be reckoned with for sure. Yeah, it might, it might be one of those where, it, like, you know, it's only because of the squad format. You know, maybe maybe you're never taking this over, like, say, Undead or Dark Elves or whatever. If if you're just trying to win, you know, first prize in a in a single player. But I think for the squad, I think this this is a real nice use of Morgan Thorg. Yeah, because of the squad format, like you say, we we know the three or four races that we really think are the strongest. But people have to take six or seven. And so then it starts to get much, much closer the, the lower down that list you go. And this is then a very, very viable team for, for one of the players, particularly if they're experienced with Amazons and they're interested to see how the new team plays. Yeah, cheers. Okay, now this is will be probably normal to tabletop goers, um, but it blew my mind when I realised that the costs for Dark Elves haven't changed and now they get an extra 50k. So... You know, maybe it's not normal, I don't know. There's only three blitzers. You could go fourth blitzer, couldn't you? But I thought with the way the skills worked, um, I quite liked having, you know, the three dodge, the block, the wrestle, and then a dodge on the runner, and then allow him to go three rerolls. I love three rerolls as as dark elves, and then obviously the apothecary. So, like, the freedom of that third reroll, I think, is, is glorious. But I understand if people would just want to go, you know, get another blodger, right? They could just get another blitzer in there. Um, but there you go. That's that's. I, is it the standard Dark Elf team, Rick? Um, relatively, yeah. I, there is a little bit of leeway with playing around with it these days. I don't think it is a. There is a standard as strongly as there was in CRP. They've always been strong. They still are. They're now the number one Elf team, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. The the other thing, other thing you can do with it is you can take leader on the runner uh, and then have a uh, rookie a uh, rookie blitzer in there if you want to instead but yeah i really really like this build i'd very very happily take this and run this that's a yeah. tournament nice okay another tier one team uh, that's an option is dwarves uh I've gone for the kind of purple chest build and skill picks here. You know, we've got the block runner, we've got a bunch of guard, and then a mighty blow uh, lineman. So you've got that mighty blow tackle to, you know, if you have to beat elves of, of some variety, you know, good luck scoring against them, beating them if they still got 11 players. You, you know, you, you need something to give you that damage edge. 
the uh, the luxury troll slayer there is you know he can be a decoy or or used for frenzy sometimes, and it's crazy they get four rerolls now on an apothecary and twelve men. They've got so much gold and so little to spend it on. But I mean they are getting value from those four rerolls, aren't they? With this multiple rerolls in one turn is kind of interesting, right? I I really think they are, and I think we might have to see this more across the board on races. Teams taking more rerolls. Um, but again, it's just something, it's so ingrained in us that three is enough rides, but multiple rerolls a turn, I think we're only just starting to tap into it fully. And it's why Slan crept up recently as well. Some of the more uh, agility teams are, are making some really funky plays with multiple rerolls a turn. And people might think, well, dwarves can't do that much. They're slow. They've got short hands and block. Why do you need it? But if you're trying to make a score, if, if somebody's held you up a bit on turn eight, you might love having three rerolls. And uh, mm -hmm. you can also greed some hits earlier than that. And you can make some go for it to get better position. There's all sorts you can do with those four rerolls. So, yeah, this is really strong. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and like those things when people break away and you've got, like, you know, you've got maybe three GFIs to hit the ball and you use the reroll. And well, now you can reroll the hit as well and stuff. So, yeah, I think that's going to be the four rerolls. It's giving them a lot more value than they would have done in the old rules, for sure. Certainly. Okay, and here's Lizards. Um, funnily enough, for the oldest, one of the oldest races to play the game, they, they haven't changed at all. They've still got the standard Croxigo, six Bloxaurus, bunch of linemen, three rerolls, Apothecary. It, it shakes out amazingly. The extra costs for the the rerolls and the blockers work just works out that they're they're not changed from what they've always been. <laughs> That's right. Uh, one of the main reasons why we've seen NAF tournaments go to one one five is so that Saurus uh, can all be there. Lizards just wouldn't work at 110 anymore, but uh, they work perfectly at 115. There's not a lot else to say. Um, I've sometimes seen people take one tackle instead of one of the block, and, and they've done well with it. I've, I've been undone by it, so you can, you can add a tiny bit of variety, but this is basically the crux of the team. Uh, some people really like to get a chameleon skink in, but sadly it just undoes the uh the the tv uh you you just can't fit that in really with it with the primary team so yeah here we are this is lizards as you say as they've always been yeah if funny enough in the gg tour we saw ost who's a table topper isn't he and he had a guard a saurus and a wrestle saurus so yeah there are wrinkles you can put into it but um but yeah pretty much this this is lizards and it's they're still a monster team right R regardless of, of anything else Yep, a big threat, uh, especially to those slightly weaker bash teams like Dwarves. Um, yeah, they're, they're an awesome, awesome team for sure. Okay, now this is this is the big one. This is uh, Core's tip for tip for the top. Um, I don't know how he'd build them exactly, but this is kind of what I've come up with. Um, of course, Rat Ogre with Juggernaut for the one turn and just general general Mighty Blow Blitzing. Uh, guard on the Blitzers because it's good. <laughs> Wrestle so they can sack, block so they can carry a bit, and sidestep for the one turn. Uh, 12 players with three rerolls and an apothecary. Uh, the 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 50k rerolls, which like seems an unbelievable thing for Skaven, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't really translate. They, they, I've, I've ended up with 30k left over. The throws are 85, so maybe there's some clever way to wiggle around the cash better. But um, this is this is what I came up with. Yeah, I, I really like this, Jimmy. Um, we saw the rise of Underworld in Blood Bowl 2020, and then they had to be tiered higher. We saw the rise of Slan. And now word on the grapevine, like you say, is that we're seeing the rise of Skaven and the unstoppable one turn with the Juggernaut Rat Ogre. He's definitely going to move. He might punch a teammate on the way, but he's getting it done. The sidestep gutter runner. And people are saying the thrower with the two plus pass, but I'm looking at your team and it's so hard to fit it in unless you drop a gutter runner, which seems madness to me. Uh, you could drop a, a reroll and take leader, but that, that doesn't fit great either. Uh, or the bench maybe, but no bench Skaven sounds not ideal. So yeah, I'm not quite sure how I'm getting the thrower in. I think I prefer your build and this is a very strong team. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so one of the lower tier teams now, we've got the Tomb Kings and uh, yeah, so they were they were out of loads of skills uh, plus a secondary and I thought, you know, or two secondaries and, and so I thought, you know, I played around with the double block Tomb Guardians, but then 
that's that was my initial thought. But then when you build the team and you have four rerolls, I thought, well, you don't really need to block that much if you've got four rerolls, like that much. Um, so why not stack a mighty blow tackle on on one of the blitzers, and then you've got a, a potent anti elf weapon, haven't you? And you know you get loads of guard, five guard here, loads of strength. Um, block on the thrower, and it could be a great team for grabbing those draws in the in the in the team format for the for the squad. I I think this team will be winning some games as well. So much strength, so much guard, so much resistance with regen and thick skull against the bash teams, and like you say, just ideally placed to take the mighty blow tackle because uh, they don't have to take that secondary. And yeah, so then suddenly they're anti-elf as well. And wow, yeah, this is a beautiful team. I think we're going to see a lot of Tomb Kings in the squads. But it is just one per squad, so it's not like that's going to be a, a major issue for the tournament. Yeah, that is really good, isn't it? The squad system is just going to stop a massive preponderance of whatever everybody thinks is the most overpowered race. <laughs> Yeah, Great idea. yeah, and all star player. You know, there's been whispers of uh, too much bomber dribble snot in all sorts of formats, but again, we're only going to see one bomber dribble snot per squad, so nothing's going to break this tournament due to the squad <laughs> system. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so now we've got a, a tournament regular um, from the CRP days, and they've been changed a little bit, right? We've got the mummies are increased by 10 total, the ghouls are increased by 20 total. So that 30k that you had left over is now gone, but there's still 50k to go, and what do you spend it on? Well, I figured, um, you know, you could go to 13 players, but maybe a keg, because then if you go with a Bloodweiser keg, you know, if something like a mummy or a white getting KO'd could cripple you, and multiple ghouls maybe, so now the, the keg could just give you a little boost that maybe a, a zombie lineman wouldn't. I mean, however, 13 gives you more freedom of foul, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is off base and, and just 13 players is better. Um, but it's the standard stuff, right? A couple of guards, block and wrestle on the ghouls. Uh, three rerolls, pretty nice. I decided I was going to take the keg the next time I ran on Dead Gym with this exact mm -hmm. roster. So, uh, so yeah, you, you've kind of read my mind. But, yeah, 13 players and one assistant coach is, is also absolutely fine, isn't it? Uh, you can occasionally get an extra player by, by killing someone with a necromancer, so that's, that's something else to consider. And, and then, yeah, it's just all the standard undead stuff. This is my favorite build for it. Some people like a tackle white, but I think with the wrestle ghoul it's fine and the extra guard is so useful. Some people like to guard the mummies and have a couple of rookie ghouls. Uh, it, it's just preference on these things. But yeah, it's undead and it's strong. Uh, oh, the last thing to point out is that I do kind of like skeletons in the new format. So I've always liked skeletons <laughs> like him. They've got the extra movement and they're not removed that much more often because of the thick skull. But the one thing in Blood Bowl 2020 is that skeletons actually have six plus passing. So if you're in a squeeze and you need to pick up and punt, you can do it with a skeleton and you literally can't do it with a zombie now. So there is that to consider. But if you're taking the keg, you probably want to go with the zombies. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. <laughs> Okay, so here we've got the Wood Elves, the old, the old favourites, um, back again. So they've had to drop a catcher and replace it with a, an assistant coach. Well, downgrade a catcher to a lineman, replace it with an assistant coach and the increased cost for war dancers. Um, we've only got an 11-man team here, two dancers, three catchers, uh, three re-rolls and an apothecary. But three re-rolls is lovely, isn't it? A lot of freedom. I guess you could go two re-rolls and a tree if you would like, but I like the re-rolls. Tackle strip, as they always have been. And I like a couple of wrestlers and a couple of dodgers uh, on the linemen. Yeah, honestly, Jim, this is the strongest Wood Elf roster I've seen since 2020. But uh, we, we can still point out the areas it's weaker. People do like the thrower. They liked him for leader. They liked him for passing for the one turn. Talking of the one turn, I said it before, there's no sprint now on the catchers. Uh, of course, the passing when you do sack the ball, if you need to get a pass away, is just worse across the board by far. And you're having to put in an extra lineman rather than catcher, which is a really big downgrade, unfortunately, in that format um, because of the costing. So for those reasons, people don't take Wood Elves anymore. But of course, in the hands of a good coach, this is a still a very good team. Oh, and one thing I forgot as well is the leap isn't as good as it used to be on the war dancers for the cage dive sack. That's a, that's a little worse now also. But uh, yeah, it is a team still very capable of getting a job done. Just is it quite tier one anymore? 
I, I'm not sure. It's close. It's close. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? I mean, they do have that extra 50k, like, still. Like, they still break even, right? So they still get 50k more, even though they've had to downgrade. So, in this case, I've gone for the reroll. And, like, they're still a monster team. Like, they still are. Like, you know, and, yeah, they, as you say, like, I think it's underrated, the loss of sprint. And uh, the passing for those kind of cheeky turns where something happens but um dancers are still really really good the problem is if the game gets away from you like and i think it will it will hurt bad players more but also good players like if the game gets away from you like versus say dwarves you always have that three plus in for a shot whereas now they can do their h cage and you can just have no chance of leaping in almost right so like the the desperation players have been hit massively by the leap nurse but i think normal kind of leaping and normal gameplay is is pretty much like where it was right like i don't think they're maybe just you know i think the rumors of their demise have been greatly exaggerated <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree. And in um, progression format, I still really like them. I, I think they're really underrated. And as we see progression, Blood Bowl coming back in, Fumble have just relaunched their competitions now that they've swapped over. Blood Bowl 3 is coming out soon. COVID's easing up around the world for tabletop. So I think we'll see uh, Wood Elves start to really come back in strong in progression. But in NAF format, yeah, they're never going to quite get to where they were. Um, but at some point, some of the old coaches and some good new coaches are going to give them another go, and we'll, we'll see them win some things. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Jim, so uh, here's one that I put together, but actually it's your suggestion. We have Old World Alliance with Griff. We have had to go down to two rerolls. You can do a bit of tweaking with the positionals to suit what you fancy. You could get the human thrower in with leader if you'd rather, but I really liked this one. You've got three guard in there. That's the skills that you can take. You've got the catcher and the tree man in as well. And of course, there at the bottom is the superstar himself. He's going to win you the game single-handedly, Griff Overwall. What do you reckon, Jim? Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I'll be honest. I did look at the tiering and I thought, wait, wait a minute. This is just like almost a human team that gets Griff, right? Like this is, <laughs> you've got to give up so much on a human team to afford Griff in the first place. And you're getting three guarders. Like, I, I really liked it. Um, I really like the idea of three guard plus Griff. Yeah, and human linemen fine players so yeah I, th I think this could be a, this could be a force yeah it, it really could um some of the new stuff obviously has loner on it and the re-rolls are more expensive and uh off the top of my head the thrower might be worse at passing weirdly on this team than the human team but that's a really minor aside uh yeah it's it's not like you say it's not that much worse than just having humans and you get griff yeah really really cool pick jim cheers Okay, Jim, so I just had to throw an Orc team together because they're so strong in 2020. Like I said earlier, correctly tiered at Tier 1 for me. Uh, funnily enough, it's a bit awkward building them to 115. We can see that there's two assistant coaches left over here. And this way, we've gone with the Troll and the Thrower. You don't have to take those if you don't want to. And the skills also, you've really got a load of uh, room to maneuver with. I've gone three block big ones. You can skill the fourth one if you want. You can change some of those to guard. You can put more skills on the blitzers. I've gone with a guard and a tackle there. You can obviously take the leader off the thrower and buy the third reroll. You can drop the bench or have the bench. You could bring in a goblin. There's loads of different options. None of them quite work perfectly to 115. So just whatever anybody's preference is. But orcs are strong and that's the bottom line. Because <laughs> Rick Reckless says so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I would like a goblin if I was going to take a troll. I'll, I'll be honest, like that'd be my thing. But yeah, Biggins obviously move five is like it's incredible, isn't it? Like that. The, the big part of Orcs was like getting draws, which again in this squad format, not so bad. Getting a bit more draw, like you know, dwarves and orcs. Were, that was the big thing for winning tournaments in a Swiss kind of format. You know, you're going to get those draws. You can't really, you know, you can't really get around the fact that it's going to be hard to win some games uh, but you've got a lot more freedom to draw in these and, and let your dark elves and wood elves go after the winds or your skaven whatever so um, yeah pretty nice isn't it bog standard you know guard and block and stuff but uh, yeah pretty pretty nice pretty nice it is and I, I saw them do really decently at, uh, at the NAFC and as a very silly aside Jim I've just realised recently how nice it is to have vomit on the troll when you get some snotlings against you <laughs> it's almost all auto break isn't it <laughs> it really is it really is <laughs> yeah, and you're, yeah it's a good point actually because you're still only getting three dice against them like it's it seems silly doesn't it to like to give up the three dice but you'd be getting you'd be three dicing a lot of things and they've got dodge to it and they've got sidestep so yeah that's that's actually a, it's actually a not a crazy thing to, 
Takes out that one in twenty-seven turnover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, but the sidestep and that, that you're not like you know if you've got yeah. you, you're often going to have guard next to him, another player. You could be three dicing a human lineman, and all of a sudden a snotling's tougher to knock down than a human lineman yeah. unless you unless you vomit on him. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Exactly, exactly. Hard counter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I really like Necro at tier two. I think they're strong down there. You have to make sure that you get the ghouls in these days, Jim, as the wraiths have no hands. And if you lose a wolf or a ghoul and you've taken less than the four, it can start to be a real problem. Uh, you can play around with this build quite a bit. I've only gone 11 men. You've got the Necromancer for a very iffy 12, but it gives you three rerolls. You can drop one of those rerolls uh, if you want to. You can drop one of the positionals, but like I say, it's risky. And I really, really like the skill spread here. Um, you can go block or guard on the fleshies. I do like the guard. Block on the werewolves seems pretty standard. I guess you could throw in a dodge one, but uh, block is really the standard way to go. Uh, guard on the wraith is just an absolute given. Isn't it a dream now that they've got sidestep? And even foul appearance occasionally works really well with the guard there. And I've gone with a sure hands ghoul. You can go with a block if you'd rather. That's a really close preference pick as well. So there you go. They're really, really strong in tier two, in my opinion, however you build them. And that's Necro. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's it's very strong, isn't it? Uh, the, the, as you say, the skills, the rates are unbelievable. Like as 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 bad as No Hands is, which you can't overestimate. Like you know, you have already got limited, uh, like responsiveness, limited agility uh, over the team. Um, so so that is really, I think it's really bad the, the the No Hands. But yeah, foul appearance is devastating, isn't it? It's been buffed in in twenty twenty, and so, yeah, you know, block sidestep guard is is just incredible and like. One of the biggest downsides of the race is the progression leveling them, and then NAF takes care of that. You just stick the guard straight on them, and monster, monster players, actually. Monster players. <laughs> yep. Um, looking at this team, I really just want to go out and play it, because, yeah, th those two rates are going to do so much work. They are, they are such a hassle to play against, on top of all the other cool stuff that Necro already used to have. Yeah, and like the eleven players is a weakness, you know. Like it, it, it is weakness, but it does mean you're getting all your TV on the pitch, and three reels is is quite comfortable, right? Like it's it's yeah, it's it's really nice. <laughs> it, it is, and and you're a regen team, and and the fleshies are super good at taking a hit. So yeah, and hopefully you're going to remove a, a little bit yourself <laughs> at, at some point. <laughs> hopefully, so, yeah, the, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things going for you. Hmm. Well, Jim, this is where the skill packages get really, really interesting. So Snotlings just don't need the skills, right? They don't need them anywhere. Even the trolls only have strength access. And so you're just happy to do away with them for the superstar players. So the bottom package they get is four skills and two star players. And then you spend those two skills each to get the better star players that are available anyway. Armor Dribble Snot might be the most overpowered thing in the game right now. So he's in there, of course. And then a movement nine, agility, two plus ball carrier. How does that sound to you, Jim? And strength three and and kind of agility one plus, right? With two heads and extra arms as well. So yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable player hack for him. And his special ability is sometimes relevant, isn't it? Getting the ball, like, you know, without having to roll. So yeah. it's it's actually surprising, surprisingly useful is 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 special rule. And it's a it's a funny old it's a funny old team, isn't it? Snotlings, to be honest. But um, this is an interesting one as well because this is without Morg, right? Snotlings will often go with Morg, and um, so this would this would free up Morg for another team like uh, Old World Alliance or Amazons to like cram Morg on there if you wanted to do that. And uh, yeah, it seems it seems pretty good. I like the fungus flinger that you've got in there. Yeah, um, all the Snotling main tabletop coaches tell me that he's an absolute must. So I'd have got in a lot of trouble if I hadn't put him in. Apparently, he does a lot of work. Of course, it does mean we've got him and Bomber Dribble Snot. But uh, yeah, I, I think they're, they're a mainstay in, uh, in Snotlings. Yeah. And, then... and here we go with the inducements, Jim. So uh, they've still got a lot to spend after that roster, amazingly. Uh, the three rerolls, which fit really, really nicely. And then I've gone with two kegs and two bribes. You can reduce one of those by one and add one to the other. You can add the apothecary in and take one of those down. But an absolute must, of course, is the riotous rookies. So you've just got this huge, huge roster of snotlings. And it doesn't matter how many cas you take. They just keep on coming back. And with the swarming, you've got so many on the pitch at the start of every drive. Yeah, and you'll probably be fouling 16 times, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Really, really good value fouling. You're 
10k, 15k piece uh, fouling away at, uh, at, yeah, say a dark elf or something. It's just unbelievable value. Mm, really nice. Well, yeah, that should be that should be cool. Like I, I've never played against Snotlings, of course, with it being like a new team for this this edition and stuff. Maybe I should play a bit of Fumble because I know a lot of people really love the Snotlings and they they do quite well, don't they? Actually, surprisingly well. Like not like a stunty team, really. No, that's right. They they've won tournaments. Um, they have a very very decent win percentage in regular play on black box in Fumble, and people reporting it on their tabletop leagues. Yeah, they're 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 certainly legit. And uh, with being tier five here, they're very legit for this World Cup. Nice. Okay, Jim, here's my attempt at Underworld. There's a lot of things you can do to, to vary this one, to be honest. I just think they're strong at tier two. Um, people tell me that the Rat Ogre is really, really nice for Underworld now. I still like the idea of the troll because he's cheaper, but I did end up with a lot of money to spend. And what I've managed to do here is a similar thing to the Skaven and make the one turn look very attractive. You've got the two plus past thrower with sure hands you of course have the gutter runner and you could go sidestep again on him you could go block just to make him a more reliable ball carrier or you can go two heads like i have and uh means that he goes through that back line super well and if you're having to to go through an elf screen during a regular drive he does it super well um so really a lot of choice there um the skaven blitzer could go tackle could go mighty blow could go guard i, I think having one guard in the team can really help especially with certain setups uh the two clan rats, I've gone block and wrestle, which seems pretty standard. And then I've gone a little bit funky because I've taken a dirty player, but that's because we get the 50k bribes and we have so much money to spend. So uh, so we've gone with uh, with a load of bribes at the end to go with the dirty player. Nice, yeah. And loads of players here, loads of snotlings. Uh, there was, would be the opportunity to go stars if you want to drive, but I guess this would yeah. this would free up the stars for the other the other rosters as well in the squad format. Yeah, exactly, Jim. So I, I did think if people want to go stars, then they can. But like you say, they've got to work out as a group where they want to spread those stars out. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, and uh, you, you can go more goblins and less snotlings, but then you don't get the swarming. That was the nerf to the swarming, wasn't it? You have yeah. to have snotlings on the pitch to get more snotlings on the pitch now. So I liked saving the money there and having it elsewhere. So we see the bribe here. I've also thrown in a keg because so many of the players are prone to being KO'd. Most of them are armor seven. A lot of them are stunty. Some of them are even armor five. Uh, you've also got the roger gonna be hitting some of your own players. So, so yeah, I like the keg in there. You can take a second bribe if you like instead, and then three rerolls. Yeah, pretty nice, pretty nice. Interesting, interesting. Just loading up on the players and the swarming and playing into that and going for something a bit different. Leaning in the one turn with a roger. Um, yeah, a, a nice little underworld team. Yeah, cheers, Jim. Very strong at tier two. Okay, so that's all the rosters we uh, we worked on for this video. Um, what I'm going to do in future is I'm going to have like a series where I'm going to detail about each race with like multiple builds for each one and really like you know do a deep dive on them. Um, but yeah, for, for, for that's it for this video. Thank you so much, Rick. It's been fantastic having you on. Real, real pleasure, mate. Cheers. Thanks for having me and uh, thanks for coming, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.